Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. And listen, this word, this word which God has given us is magnificent and extraordinary. When a person follows and practices this word, then they have a long and blessed life on earth. Did you know that? Did you? One idea, one thought, one inspiration which God places or He makes it available to every human being, it is His Word. So His Word is an inspiration. It's an idea that revolutionizes. It revolutionizes any person. It revolutionizes a person's inner being. It removes our weaknesses. It removes our frailties our inferiority complexes. It removes any sort of prejudice when a person places God's ideas or when they drink, rather, from God's ideas and they practice them then they have to break through. They have to break through. It's not a matter of being lucky. It's not a matter of having instruction or having had opportunities or not. It's a matter of intelligence. And everyone has it. Everyone is intelligent. Everyone receives a level of intelligence and however small this intelligence may be it's enough in order for a person once placing God's ideas into practice they break through they break through pay attention I know that we will read here from the text which is one of God's great commandments, the Ten Commandments. This one is one of the commandments that are followed by a promise, God's promise. God said, God wrote, God determined, saying the following. It's the beginning of all things. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. So God commands, God commands, it's an order that he gives that children will honor father and mother. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. What for? That your days may be long. Meaning you have long life. A long life. Long life. And that it may be well with you in the land that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you listen we've seen this concept here of the family right because I speak 
from my own experience because I had seven brothers in total and we were all brought up within a fear and respect and with honor towards our parents. That's how we were brought up. None of us went down the wrong path or turned to addictions and prostitution and stealing and lying on the opposite. My dad was not a religious man. He had faith, but it was nothing to do with what the Holy Scripture says. He didn't know the Bible. He didn't have access to the Word of God. But my dad, he had within himself this principle. He would say to us and to everyone around, he'd say, I'm capable of forgiving a thief, but I do not forgive a liar. Meaning that he hated lies. Jesus is the truth. So even without understanding, my father was adhering the idea of the truth taught by Jesus. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So Jesus is the, the truth that sets free. So we grew up with this principle, only this principle. And every single day, in the morning, in the evening, when we would get up, or when it was time for us to go to bed, we had to come to our parents and say, you're blessing my father, you're blessing my mother. And if we didn't do it, then our dad would come and would slap us. So it was an obligation to ask them for their blessings. That's how things were back in the day. I think a lot of people grew up with this concept as well. Nowadays, people say, good morning. You see, the devil distorted, the devil created this idea that, oh, to ask blessing from the father and the mother, ah, this is something of the past. We are in the 21st century. Oh, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, dad. As if this would guarantee a good day to us on that day. Yes or no? How many people, how many people say good morning to you every day? How many people? For example, it's morning. When you get out of your house, everyone says, good morning, good morning, good morning. At work, everywhere you go, you find a friend, someone you know, good morning, good morning, good morning. And what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. It's simply, you know, absolutely nothing happens. Zero. Why? Because this good morning has nothing to do with the fear of the Lord, because the father and the mother represent God's family. They represent God. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So God established the family as the most sacred institution on earth. And that's why he said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a suitable helper. He didn't say, I'm going to make him a woman, female. No. A companion. No. He said, I will make him a suitable helper. So, the woman has this mission to help her husband and both become one flesh, and they give birth to children, and their children must know that him, as well as the mother, father and mother, they both represent God. So when the children say, you're blessing my father, you're blessing my mother, deep down, indirectly, they are talking to God 
indirectly asking for his blessing because the father has authority to bless as well as the mother. Just as the mother has authority to curse the child, we see that a lot out there. The mother cursing the daughter. Oh, you are doing this to me. You are being naughty, rebelling. Your children will do worse with you. And it's true. Perhaps you are watching me and agreeing with me. It's true. I paid a high price. My mother used to say this to me, and my life is a living hell today. It was a living hell, not anymore because I met Jesus. But you who are a son, a daughter, who was cursed once by your father or mother, it's the same. Meaning that the father and the mother, as one, they represent God bringing up their children. And the first thing, the first responsibility, their first mission is to bring up their children in the fear of the Lord. So when they teach a child to say, you're blessing my mother, you're blessing my father, where does this blessing come from? This blessing comes from God. God is the one who blesses. He blesses me so I can bless you. He blesses you so you can bless your loved ones. He blesses each of us in order for us to bless others, our neighbor. But this starts inside of the house, in the family. So when God says, honor your father and your mother, he doesn't say, say good morning to your mother and father. No, this doesn't mean anything. Absolutely nothing. Good morning, good morning. And what's the point of it? None. Because what makes a person have a good day is when they respect their mother and their father, when they fear God and indirectly respect their father and mother. And then they prolong their days on earth. This is written. It says here, that your days may be long and that it may be well with you. It's not just to prolong your days on earth, but for you to live well on earth. The land the Lord your God is giving you. Meaning, you honor your father and your mother and you are fulfilling the word of God. You are placing a divine idea in your life. You are basing your life upon God's thoughts. Now you can imagine what's going to happen. Huh? Very well. So today, I am the result. I am one of the results of what God has done in my life from the way that I was brought up, the education that my parents gave me. And that was the first lesson. Honor your father and your mother. Because if I did not honor them, not my mother. My mother never slapped me. But my dad, hmm, he, had, he had no mercy. So honor your father and your mother that your days may be long on earth and it may be well with you. So you, dear friends, perhaps you may say, Bishop, I was abused by my father, the one who should have taken care of me and protect me. He abused me. How, how am I going to ask the blessing from a cursed person, someone who cursed me. How can I do that? So, probably, for sure, if you or your life is bitter, it is still bitter because of the abuse that you suffered from your father or perhaps from your mother, because even mothers are doing that now. If they did this to you when you were a child and it made you a traumatized person. You became bitter. 
you are unhappy, you hear the word of God, you enjoy it, you love it, you love the prayers, you love going to church, you feel good when you are in church, but after you leave the church, all that bad feelings, all that pain comes back, the torment, the distress, depression, the void, the sadness, anguish, hell itself. Do you know why it has happened, dear friends? Because you have to honor your father and mother, even though they've done something evil against you. But how can I do that? Well, this is where the sacrifice lies, the one we have to make because of our faith. Because if you have faith in the word of God, then in order for you to obey this word, you must sacrifice your will. Bishop, this is not possible. I cannot forgive my father. Okay. If you cannot forgive him, you are going to continue suffering. Because if you, if you are already an adult, you know, you know very well, you have this conscience. If you do not forgive, how do you want to forgive the greater forgiveness that comes from God? It's not possible. It's not possible. If you want to be blessed on earth and live a long life and a blessed life that everything will go well with you, then you must honor your father and mother. And to honor them, you must forgive them. But how can I forgive? I don't feel like doing it. It's not a matter of feeling. It's not about feeling like it or not. It's just about obedience to the word of God. When God says, when Jesus said, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them, just as I'm forgiven. Jesus teaches that in the Lord's Prayer. You already know that. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Forgive our debts just as we forgive our debtors. Therefore, dear friends, as long as you carry this resentment against your father or your mother, it will be as though you took a, a knife and you were stabbing your own body. You feel pain, etc. And you continue to suffer because you don't want to forgive. When you forgive, you do good to your own self. You are doing good to yourself. And obviously, the person whom you forgave will, of course, God will reach out to them. And if he doesn't, even still, you are going to be blessed. What matters is you. What matters is you giving what you have. Didn't you receive forgiveness? Don't you receive forgiveness? Don't you like God's forgiveness? Then you have to forgive Imagine if I didn't forgive, I would be lost. Because every day we are challenged to hate, we are challenged to, you know, that feeling, that desire to take revenge comes, doesn't it? But that's not God's feelings, that's not from God. Then we have to forgive. Jesus said that we should pray even for our enemies let alone forgive father and mother. So honor your father and your mother. Do what God is telling you and leave the rest with him. But if you have to forgive in order to honor them, then forgive. Forgive them. Because if you don't, if there is no forgiveness, if you do not release forgiveness, you are never going to be set free. You continue to suffer and there is no prayer, fasting, offerings. There is nothing else that can resolve. There is nothing that can change your life except when you decide to forgive. Forgiveness 
I said and I repeat, it's not a matter of feeling, because if you, if we depend on the feelings of the heart in order to forgive, we are never going to do it, because the heart is wicked, it's perverse, it's deceiving, it's cruel. This is written. So let's not depend on the heart in order to forgive. Let's use our intelligence just a bit. The intelligence. Forgive. Forgive. How can I forgive? Teach me. Pray for the person. That's all. If you pray for them, if you ask God, Oh my God, I pray that you may bless my father, my mother. I forgive, I forgive them. If you say that to God, even though you haven't gone to them yet to speak, but if you already spoke to God, my God, I forgive them. If I want to receive your forgiveness that is infinitely greater, then I have to forgive. So I forgive. I pray that you may bless. I pray that you may bless my father and my mother. When you do that, the spirit of hatred that has been leading your bitter life, that is making you suffer your entire life, that you even feel like dying, killing yourself because of that. This spirit leaves you. And then, yes, God is able to work inside of you because you are free. The door, the entry door for God is open in your life. And God will do his work in your life. He will do the, the rest. He said, honor your father and mother. Honor your father and your mother. It does not matter if they were good or bad parents. What matters is that you honor them. I learned that. I can tell you about this. All of us, the seven children, we learned to honor father and mother. My mother was very sweet, very kind. She was a saint, let's put it this way. My dad was very strict. He wasn't easy. Due to his own upbringing, the difficult childhood he had, but he learned the truth and he demanded this honor indirectly. He didn't know that from the word of God. But if we did not honor him in the morning, asking him, you're blessing my father, you're blessing my father. This was the good morning that we exchanged inside our house with our parents. We grew up, we were brought up within this principle. This was the foundation of our faith. Because without knowing the Holy Scriptures, we were already doing that. Today, praise God, we, we lead people to receive what we have received. If you want to be blessed, dear friends, then do not depend on Bishop Macedo or anybody else or the church or the religion. Do not depend on anybody. Depend on yourself and above all on God. Obey his word and you are going to break through. That's the reality. Obey him. If you obey this principle because this is one of the Ten Commandments, you know that the Ten Commandments is the foundation of all the order on earth. You know that every law in every country has been based upon the Ten Commandments. That's where they took all the laws from. Of course, that not everyone obeys. However, it is written. It's been determined. He says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days may be long in the land which the Lord has given you and that it may be well with you. Meaning, you see 
out there, many children, youths, losing their life prematurely or taking their own life. Taking their own life. Their own life. Because of what? Because they did not have knowledge. They did not honor their parents. And they suffered the consequences. Because it's written and no one can change that. Did you understand, dear friends? So, this is the practical faith. It's pointless for someone to be in church, be faithful in their offerings and their tithe, do charity, be nice, if they do not honor their parents. There is no salvation, I think, this way, because it is written. Because to honor father and mother, the father and the mother are representatives. They typify. They are symbols of God in that family. The devil destroyed all that. Today, there is no such thing as respect between children and parents, parents and children. The family is destroyed, shattered because of sin, because of the... I, I say because of the lack of information from God's word. The lack of information. Because when someone reads this text, one of the commandments says, Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land which the Lord is giving you. That it may be well with you. Meaning, it will go well with us. We are going to be happy if we honor our parents, because if we honor our parents, we will teach our children to also honor, to honor us as well. And the children of our children will honor their parents. And this way, we continue obeying the word of God, His commandment. And then we are going to reap the fruits of such obedience. You sacrifice by fearing, by obeying the word of God. This is faith. Then, of course, the word of God will honor you. Now, if you do not honor the word, then how can the word honor you? You want the blessing, but you don't want to honor the word of the blessing. Then nothing happens. So this is the great sacrifice that many people must do. And that's why this world is such a mess. It's upside down. And it will burn. No stone will be left upon another. And there is no mercy. It's pointless to cry and complain. They can say whatever they want. But this will come to pass because of the disobedience. Because of a disobedience, we live piece of hell in this world. Isn't it what happened there in the Garden of Eden? That's it. Disobedience to the Word of God. And He is one of the most sacred commandments. I'd not say the most sacred, but one of the most sacred commandments from God's law, which is the principle of family. Because family did you know that family was the establishment or the first institution on earth? Even before the church. Did you know that? Did you know that? The church of the Lord Jesus could not exist if family did not exist. So... Family is the holiest institution on the face of the earth. That's why whenever you establish a family, you're planning to get married. Don't be led by your eyes. Don't go led by passion. Use your mind. Look for someone who is God-fearing above all things. So that if you fear God as well, you both may establish a home that is sacred the holiest institution on the earth. It's the family.
but it always starts with this obedience to the word of God. On your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you. He commanded, it's an order. And when he commands, there is no debate in it. You just have to obey. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long, meaning that you may have a long life, and that it may be well with you on, in the land. It's not just to have a long life, but that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Dear friends, if you want the life and the abundant life that Jesus has promised, you have to start from there. If you have to forgive, forgive. If you have to sacrifice to forgive, then do it. Do what's necessary, but honor your father and your mother. But my mother already died. Okay, if she's dead, there's nothing else to do. Nothing else. Oh, but my father died. Okay, don't even ask me the question, please. Honor your father and mother. Forgive. If they are there, if they are not there with you, it doesn't matter if they are near you or far from you. If you don't have access to them anymore, you don't even know them, your mother, your father. But you must forgive. Pray for them. All right? May God bless you. We shall be back here to talk more about this. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless all those who obey, of course.